Johnson, former Department of Homeland Security Secretary during the Obama administration, also former General Counsel for the Defense Department. Jay, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Welcome to New York. Thank you. What does what can the administration do about this? Title 42 is going to be lifted. They really have no choice because of the court decisions, and they, they probably would prefer that it that it not be lifted. But they're going along with it. And so one of the things I learned owning this problem for three years when I was secretary is that migration from Central America from the south of our border reacts sharply to information about perceived changes in our enforcement policy. The smugglers amplify that. So I'm quite sure that the fact that Title 42 is coming to an end is widely known in Central America, Nicaragua, Venezuela, and elsewhere. <clears throat> I believe that regional processing centers it is a great idea. Give people an alternative to coming here illegally offer people the opportunity in a controlled way to come here legally, safely, and have their asylum claims adjudicated. They've started off in Colombia and Guatemala. We need a lot more of these, as long as they are amply staffed, resourced, and they really do work. Um, as far as the military, sending our military, it's usually the guard, to our southern border is not new um, because of uh, the concept of a posse comitatus the U.S. military cannot participate in domestic law enforcement activities here in this country. Um, so they can only be there in support, as Gabe noted. But they have to have very clear guidance about what it is they're supposed to do. Very often, we send large numbers of guard, reserve, active duty down to the southern border. And the question is, well, what are they going to do? So they have to have clear guidance about what they can do to most effectively support the Border Patrol and Customs. What will Secretary Mayorkas going there tomorrow accomplish? I think that it's important that the secretary or some other very visible member of government continue to send the message over and over and over again. There's a right way and a wrong way to come here. If you come here the wrong way, we will send you back. In three years, I've visited uh, Texas, the southern border, probably at least a dozen times. I visited Central America several times to continually send this message. So it's important that he be visible at this moment and uh, continue to send the message about uh, what our authorities are and how we will enforce the law in a fair, humane manner. But watching those people just scrambling for whatever supplies, scarce supplies that they could get was, is heartbreaking. Yes, and it shouldn't yes it happen. The, the wealthiest country in the world should be able to feed, clothe, house, and process uh, and, you know, migrants to this country. This is a decades-old problem. There are two million cases backlog. Yes. And why, why can't we? I mean, I mean we, we can say it's political gridlock, but there is money in the budget available, discretionary money that could be thrown at this, hire people, process, and... When you have people coming across our southern border in these numbers, even with the additional resources we have now, it's simply not feasible to keep track of them all. And the backlog in cases just grows and grows and grows. And communities along the southern border are forced to absorb uh, these large numbers. And then it becomes, as you know, a, a political stunt by the governor of Texas, governor of Florida. And he's resuming send sending, people, sending people north. Great right, habit. sending people to here in New York, to the bus station, to Massachusetts Avenue, to Martha's Vineyard, to Chicago, wherever else. Where, and it should be done in, at a national level in a more organized fashion where a number of states uh, share this burden and take on uh, this population, much like we did with refugee resettlement seven, eight years ago.